Great to have you back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news at 10, live on Channel Television. A reminder of our major stories. Voters in Oshun State troop out to choose their next governor in an election that has been described as peaceful. Police arrest three people for alleged vote buying and selling. Tussle over ownership of the Labour Party pitches the NLC president Ayuba Waba against the party's national chairman Abdul Salami Abdul Kadri. President Muhammad Buhari departs Abuja tomorrow for New York to participate in the 73rd UN General Assembly. And at least 25 people killed after an attack on a military parade in Iran. State leaders accuse U.S.-backed Gulf states of being behind the incident. ChannelsTV.com has more information for you and on YouTube.com forward slash channels web you can see our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channel TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. And besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature, so you can use it to share those pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you, especially those who are in Ocean State. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. We continue with politics now. A former chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Nuhu Ribadu, has joined the Adamawa State governorship race. Mr. Ribadu, who unsuccessfully ran for president in 2011, announced his decision in Yola, the Adamawa state capital, today. He says he plans to challenge the incumbent governor, Bindo Jubila, for the governorship ticket of the All Progressive Congress, APC. This is not the first time Mr. Ribadu will be in the race for the state's top job. In August 2014, he defected from the APC to the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and ran for governor but he failed to achieve his ambition as the APC swept to victory. Now, some governors on the platform of the People's Democratic Party were guests at the zonal headquarters of the party in Port Harcourt, the River State capital today, for screening ahead of the governorship elections in their states in 2019. The event, which was more or less a routine exercise, had in attendance the governors of Rivers, Delta, and Aquibom, including the governor of Cross River State, who showed up much later. Speaking on behalf of his colleagues, the Delta State governor, Ifan Okoa, expressed optimism that they would deliver their states for the party. We had a very good interactive section. We asked some questions and uh, we had to fill all our forms here. For three of us that are sitting right here and uh, they are standing with you right here. Uh, we don't have any opponents, but obviously with the rules of our party, there will still be an affirmative Congress, uh, state Congress, and that uh, will go through and thereafter enter into the campaigns. Uh, but we do know that we have all worked very hard for the party and worked very hard for uh, various states, and we are very hopeful uh, that we will deliver the states uh, to the PDP. The president will go to New York tomorrow, September the 23rd, to participate in the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly, UNGA, which officially opened on Tuesday, September the 18th. President Muhammadu Buhari is expected to address the assembly on Tuesday on the opening day of the general debate. According to a statement by the presidential spokesperson, Mr. Femi Adishino, the president will present Nigeria's national statement reaffirming the nation's commitment to international peace and security, the fight against corruption, the return of illicit assets, counterterrorism and insurgency, curbing irregular migration, resettling internally displaced persons, recharging the receding lake charge and the reform of the United Nations are also expected to feature in the President's address. In addition to having audience with the UN Secretary General, President Buhari is also expected to have bilateral meetings with African and other world leaders as well as a select group of Nigerian professionals based in the United States.
to environment stories now. The Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization has commended the Nigerian government for hosting the organization's regional office for Western and Central Africa. The body is, however, requesting that the Office for Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that's the IPCC, be moved back to the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, as the country battles the effects of climate change. Mr. Petari Talas stated this as the signing of a host country memorandum of understanding in recognition of efforts to support Nigeria in the fight against the impact of climate change. What we have started seeing in the atmosphere is uh, quite uh, striking. At the moment, uh, you are suffering because of flooding here in, in Nigeria, and uh, there have been uh, two tropical cyclones hitting USA called Florence and, uh, and causing lots of damage, and, uh, and another other one, Mangut, uh, hitting Philippines and now hitting China and, uh, and Hong Kong. And, and unfortunately, we have seen an increase in the amount of uh, natural disasters related to weather, and especially there has been an increase in the amount of storms and uh, events leading to, to, to flooding. We have more humidity in the atmosphere, which is uh, giving more power to, 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 to rainfall events and, and, and it's often leading to flooding as, as you are experiencing now also here in Nigeria. In Nigeria we have discussed that, uh, that you have lost your IPCC office of the, of the NIMET and uh, I'm happy to have some discussions with your ministers uh, this afternoon to recommend uh, them to uh, re replace, uh, uh, to, to, to move the IPCC office back to, back to NIMET. As we continue our coverage of the states affected by flooding, the situation remains crucial in the affected communities in Anambra, Delta, Kogi, and Niger State. Our correspondent, Ulumide Makoli, takes a look at the reports on the emergency caused by the flood and how the displaced residents are trying to cope with the situation. Nature converts this front yard of a home into a swimming pool for these boys. They find something to play with in a bad situation. The residents of the affected communities can hardly stay in their homes anymore. The Anambra State Emergency Management Agency says nine out of the 28 relief centers have been activated in Ogbaru, an Anambra East local government area. These women recount what the flood has cost them. I just came to the local government to, to check if I can see any accommodation, any place that, I, that will accommodate me and my children before I now go back and take few of my properties before coming to this place. In Odekpe, the camp is functional, but state and agency officials express their concerns. We are calling the federal government to intervene quickly in as much as uh, they have visited this area, but we want to, want to see a more practical thing in handling this situation. The Minister of Health has already promised that they were going to set up uh, a unit of the hospital, of the hospital in each camp to take care of people that are in the camp. In Delta states, the people improvise on this flooded street. After all, if it floats, it can be useful. We are helpless. But I do not know what, how much government is going to do. Uh, I just hope there will be something just beyond the way it is now, so that government can ameliorate the pains of the people. So the governor pays a visit to affected communities, including Powerline, Anuko, in Oshimili local government area, where he pledges his commitment to alleviate the people's plight. We sorry say this kind of thing will happen. Nobody can say it will happen, but as God wants it, it don't happen like that. But I do, but on our part as government, we know say we will do something to assist. In Kogi State, the people displaced by the flood in Koton Karfe try to get used to their new surroundings. Not easy, but they are grateful they are safe. Over in Niger State, the state emergency management agency strives to make the people more comfortable, providing shelter, blankets, food, and medical care. We have these pneumonia cases. We also have this psychological problem because of the stress. They have uh, IBP. We record we have record of IBP. Some people come with headache, headache. But what we, what we would consider there is because of stress. Some people, because of what happened to them, they can't sleep. 
It is not certain when the flooding in these communities will abate. For now, the people try to endure this hardship that nature has forced on them, while pleading with the government to do all it can to alleviate their predicament. Olumide Macaulay, Channels Television News. They're not the only ones. In Kano State, the flooding disaster has dealt a big blow on the residents there. 31 people dead and more than 10,000 houses destroyed in eight local government areas. During a fact-finding mission to the affected areas, the state's deputy governor, Nasiru Gwaluna, confirmed that in addition to the direct intervention funds of 100 million naira, the state government is taking further steps to assist victims of the disaster. Our correspondent, Idris Jibrin, has this report. This is what is left of the homes of some Kano residents who are now counting their losses after heavy flooding swept their houses and farmlands. Many of them have been rendered homeless, some lives lost, and sources of income destroyed. Although these children are having a swell time playing in the water, their parents are waiting anxiously for help to come their way. Their long wait, however, appears to be over as the state deputy governor visits some of the affected communities spread across eight local government areas to assess the level of damage. In one of the local government, we find houses that were built inside farms. Oh, they were built and then the surrounding were converted to farms. How can you build a house inside farmland? Definitely, and most of them are mud houses. Definitely, there is going to be a disaster when there is heavy rainfall. Apart from financial interventions, the Kano state government is also promising to put in place adequate measures to avoid a recurrence. We do what we can as much as possible to sensitize people, to create awareness on this kind of issues so that we can be able to prevent the occurrence in the future. Some of the residents are still struggling to recover items trapped in the water, while others are already making efforts to rebuild. The visit to the affected communities gives residents a subtle assurance that government is ready to come to their aid. And of course, another opportunity for government authorities to set guidelines for them to avoid a repeat of the disaster. Idris Jubrin, Channel Television News. When the news at 10 returns, shareholder group reacts to Sky Bank takeover by the Central Bank of Nigeria as the Nigerian stock exchange suspends trading on the bank's shares. That's on business news. Join us again. <laughs>